so I'm on vacation. I just got here and I'm watching TV, eating my dinner, and I'm doing my first reading vlog. So, welcome. Welcome to this experience. I hope you enjoy this experience, everybody. My first reading vlog, so yeah. Okay, everyone. I have arrived in my little getaway apartment in the Eastern Townships in Quebec. And I'm very excited. I'm here for a whole week. And I hope to read. <laughs> I plan to read. But this show is potentially going to take up a lot of time as well. <laughs> Uh, the two books that I brought with me to read are two new purchases that I just picked up. So they're not even like on my TBR or anything. <laughs> this is what happens to me. All right, so the two books that I picked up are Bunny, which I know I'm late to the party as usual, but I'm really excited to read Bunny because I just finished reading 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl and I loved it. I'll be talking about it in my wrap up for July. So that's on the agenda for this week. And the other one is I'm gonna read my first Nikki French until it's over. I know it's a standalone thriller. I've heard so many good things about them and I just can't wait to finish off my summer vacation. This will be my last week of summer vacation before I have to get back to work with a good old fashioned thriller. So I hope you come along on this ride with me. I'll be showing you some of the sites. Uh, it's a beautiful area of Quebec of the Eastern Townships, a rolling hills, lakes, lots of nature, vineyards, spas. I, I intend to spend some time at the spa and yeah, I'm going to take you along for the ride, but I just arrived in my Airbnb um, little getaway here and I think I'm going to just chill watch some Ted Lasso which I'm totally addicted to and probably take it easy and then I will see you all again tomorrow. I'll show you guys my dinner. Here's my dinner. Turkey with, with quinoa. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Good morning. <sighs> the sun is up and I am up with the sun. I'm gonna make some coffee and then I'm gonna show you this cute little place. Good morning. Oh my gosh, nothing like waking up with the sun. Okay guys, so the coffee's on. Hey, coffee. Yeah, I meant to see, I'm gonna show you around this place. It's so cute. Basically, and it's, it's an apartment above uh, a bike store. And I think there's a coffee shop downstairs. Because they gave me, that's cute when I arrived, they left me some yummy coffee, which is now brewing. <laughs> brewing. Um, yay, coffee. So, yeah. So, I'm gonna show you around. See, the light in this place is crazy. Like, first of all, it's like a dawn. <laughs> yeah, the dawn woke me this morning. I have to get my voice going. This place is so cute. There's a kitchen. Then there's the, there's this dining area. And then a uh, living room. 
see what I really love is look at this windows. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's the door. There's a door leading into the apartment, and then there's like these beautiful windows. <gasps> wow. Beautiful, right? And then leading out onto. Dun, 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 Anybody get feeling sick yet? Anybody dizzy? Isn't that nice? See, I'm starting to wake up. My voice is coming back. Oh, what else can I show you guys? Oh, this cute bathroom. Mm, look at the light. The light is just mm, shining in. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So cute, right? I don't know, I can't see what's on the camera. Oh, and this is the bedroom. Oh yeah, it's completely dark. I have to open the I have to open the curtains in the bedroom. Woo! Oh. Okay. I'll open the other ones. Oh, it is bright and sunny today. Yeah, so the sun is bright. Uh, and so, yeah, this is the bedroom. Okay, so let's go a little bit small, so I'll go over here. Oh, and this is so nice. Like the artwork is like um, Tour de France artwork. This says 1924 Tour de France. And then you can see the boys on the bikes here. My dad used to call them the boys on the bikes. And then, well, he still does. And then this one is nice too. Cool, right? Isn't it a cute little place? I think so. I'm happy. I think I'm going to be very happy here. So what day is today? Today is... <laughs> it's always a good sign when you've forgotten the days of the week. You're on vacation and you forgot what day it is. Uh, hmm. It is Tuesday. Tuesday, I think. Wednesday. I don't know. And I'm here for the whole week and I'm going to be doing some reading and some resting and some naturing, I guess. <laughs> probably a good idea, right? And I guess I'm gonna take you guys along with me for my first vlog. Are you ready? Are you ready to hang out? Hello. It's a little later in the morning. There's like a fluff. It's a little later in the morning and I have my coffee. Mmm. Mmm. I'm feeling a little bit more wide awake than I was when I first chatted at you. Uh, and I'm gonna read, I've been reading a little bit. And then this is my book. This is the first book. Whoosh! This is the first book I'm gonna read. I guess it's a um, mystery thriller. I've never read any Nikki French before until it's over. I heard they write really good mystery thrillers. It's a husband and wife team. Uh, so it's a pseudonym. Nikki French is the combination of Nikki Gerard and Sean French. And I heard about them from, I can't remember, but I heard from, about them. I've heard about them and nothing but good things for a while now. So I wanted to give this author a try. This is a standalone and I think that this author also has a series. Very excited. This mystery, uh, it's so funny too because the place that I'm staying, there's a bike shop downstairs. It's not like messenger courier biking, this biking shop because we're in the Eastern Townships. 
is more of a cycle enthusiast a la sports cycling as opposed to messenger <laughs> courier, which is its own subculture. And But I think it's kind of funny. I didn't realize that uh, when I decided to read this book. And I also didn't really make any connection to the fact that this was above a cycling shop before I got here. So it's not like I did it on purpose. It just was a happy coincidence or, an, or a funny coincidence. So the main character's name is Astrid and she's a bike messenger in London. And she, the book opens with her having an accident called being doored by a, a neighbor in her area, in her neighborhood. And that's how the story opens. I'm only about 80 pages in. So this accident happens and we're learning more about Astrid and the place where she lives. She lives with seven other people. There's a lot of different characters. They are all kind of, it's a little bit of a funny household. It's two women and five men, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. And Astrid is one of the women who lives there and the other woman who lives there is uh, named Pippa. There's a bit of kind of one night stands happening between the different roommates in the household. And there are a couple of girlfriends that don't live there, but are there quite often. So there's a lot of different characters and a lot of different people in and out of this house. A couple of about 50 pages into the book, we learn that their neighbor has been murdered. The neighbor has been bludgeoned to death and was like, they found the body in the trash bins in front of the neighbor's house. We then come to learn that uh, the neighbor who was murdered is this woman named Peggy, known to the household as Peggy, but I think she was by a different name, Margaret or something. It turns out to be the woman who uh, adored Astrid in the accident. So, <laughs> uh-oh. So I can see that there is going to be something related to that accident. I guess it has to do with her murder because the murder happened sometime around the time the accident happened. And then the other part of the story so far, about 80 pages in, like I said, that, that's happening is that like some of the characters in the house, or we don't really know a lot about them and they're kind of suspicious and the police have interviewed Astrid two or three times. She doesn't really remember much from what happened after the accident. And also she seems to recall that there was somebody like her two housemates came as soon as the accident happened because they were sitting out on their front stoop and they came to help her. And she recalls a third person being there and she questions her housemates about this and both of them are pretty cagey about it. So it's a bit suspicious <laughs> and it's not clear whether the other person sort of in the shadows was one of her housemates and is one of her other housemates dangerous. So there's two men who we don't know as much about in the household. Anyway, it's pretty creepy, <laughs> not really creepy, but just, it gets the brain going in terms of the puzzle of, hmm, what's going on here? Who could have done this? And that's as far as I am, 80 pages in. So I'm gonna get back to it and I will report back. Astrid has just found a second dead person. She was supposed to pick up a package from a wealthy woman and when she got there the door was ajar and there was like an arm sprawled out and she basically discovered this poor woman's dead body and now she's being questioned by the police. So like a coincidence I suppose you know how books can be. Now we got two dead people and our protagonist Astrid and a house full of suspicious, potentially suspicious people. 
I think the men are definitely scarier than Pippa, the other woman, and the two other girlfriends who are almost barely mentioned. Uh, there's one man named Mick who is like, we just discovered that he, <laughs> that he fought in the Iraq war. So is that a, is that a, what do you call it? A red herring or is that our, is he our guy? Um, and then this other character, Owen, who is a photographer who Astrid is not sleeping with. And I actually think P Pippa sl sleeps with, M has just slept with Mick. They're all kind of sleeping together. And then this photographer guy is also super creepy. So I think we're not supposed to know who potentially in the house could be a murderer. Could they have murdered both of these women? Is it just a coincidence? We shall find out. Hello. <laughs> I'm gonna make lunch. I've read about another 50 pages. Everyone who lives in this house, who they all live together in this house, these seven people, <laughs> uh, kind of a mishmash of different folks living in this house. The owner, Miles, who I guess Astrid used to date, is has a new girlfriend, Leia, and they have decided that they are living together, so they're, they're basically kicking out. I mean, it's quite dramatic. They're kicking out everybody from the house or they're asking them to leave. And I don't know what how this is going to play into the rest of the story, but I guess it, it's building suspicion maybe about the different people in the house. So there's tension between the members of this, the roommates in this household, I guess. Uh, yeah, so that's like as far as I've gotten. I really haven't gotten very much farther. I am going to make some lunch. I'm going to make a salad with some turkey which is currently marinating in some soy sauce and sesame oil combination I really love. <clears throat> I'm gonna chop up some veggies for the salad and then I'm gonna cook the turkey in the oven. Yeah I'm really hungry so I'm gonna get going with that. Yes! Peppers, turkey, steaming hot out of the oven on a bed of salad. But listen y'all, I was trying to toss the salad and I gotta say, like I gotta say, but look at the size of these spoons. Like try tossing a salad with these massive spoons, impossible. And what are these spoons for anyway? Look how big they are. Look, it's almost the size of my head. What are they for? What are they for? Somebody explain, please. Somebody explain. Really beautiful outside, as you can see. I think I'm gonna go hang out by a lake and read and yeah, enjoy the sunshine. I'll check back with you soon. Bye. This Airbnb is great. I don't mean to complain. The spoons are just weird. Okay, everyone. So I got this pretty crappy holder to put in the car and already it's falling over. So let's see what happens.
right, so we made it to Balnea. <clears throat> I am not parked in the employee parking spot, by the way. Even though I was so stoked to find that parking spot. And then the sign was like, employees only. And I was like, uh-huh. So I'm going to head up and register. And then I don't know if I can film in Balnea. Uh, just to let you know about Balnea Spa, if you're ever in Montreal, got to make the trip to Balnea. It's about 45 minutes outside of Montreal. And it's just beautiful. It's in an area called, well, near... A ski area called Bromount. Uh, I'm pretty sure cell phones aren't allowed. I'm not going to ask. I'm just going to try to sneak y'all in there. Okay, but if not, I will talk to you after. Okay, you guys, it's very difficult to clandestinely film here. I don't know if you can hear me, but it's super hard to film here. It has to be super secret. I don't know if I can do it. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna get in trouble. These people are everywhere, like inspecting to make sure that we're not using our phones. So I can't really give you an update right now. Soon. Okay, guys, I'm clandestinely filming the surroundings. Check it out. Oh my God, I'm gonna get in trouble. We're in part two now. We're in part two, and part two is written from the perspective of the killer. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, so I just discovered who the killer is, which made me wonder, all you lovelies out there, do you like a thriller that reveals who the killer is? And then it's a question of, how are the other characters out to find out who the killer is and the suspense of them being in danger, which is where this book is going? Uh, or do you prefer to find out like really twists and turns at the end? I've noticed that more recent thrillers tend to do the whole like perspective of the killer, which I like. I mean, I, I do like it. It's This is being done quite well. I'd be curious to know what you think comments please and yeah i think i'm close to finishing this puppy i only have about a little more than 100 pages left good morning everyone i'm up a little tired and i am gonna get ready to go out and enjoy this beautiful sunshiny country day i'm gonna take you along with me
everyone. Uh, my vacation is coming to a, an end. Today is like my last full day here. And I'm lucky because it's going to be really nice today. Really sunny. I'm not looking forward to going back to the city. And I mean, I'm looking back forward to going back to my house and my, seeing my family and everything. But I'm not really looking forward to what is to come beginning of the semester for me it feels like getting hit by a truck it's so <laughs> intense because <laughs> you go from like zero to 180 so anyway enough about that i finished until it's over by nikki french this is my first nikki french book and i have to say that i thoroughly enjoyed this book uh, so the book is written from two different perspectives the perspective of uh, one of the characters astrid the first half of the book is written from her perspective, and then the second half of the book is written from the killer's perspective, who I won't say who it is, so I don't spoil it. Uh, and it worked really well. I really thought the second half of the book was just so well written. I thought it was better than the first half of the book. There's something about the describing the psychology of this person and sort of what was going through their mind and then describing their experience of committing the murders in the book, which was really interesting. Uh, it was actually fairly well done. I mean, some of it was a little like, huh, huh. I had a couple moments of, huh. but by and large, I would say it was a pretty good read. The other thing that I would say is kind of a, a like a con is that it was a little bit tropey or predictable the way the the way that mysteries can be um especially the end although it was well written written in a, such a suspenseful way that you it did leave you guessing all the way kind of up until the end which was good i enjoyed that i enjoyed the suspense of that because you're in your head you're like there's three ways this can play out is it going to be this this or this it didn't have any crazy twists or turns which can sometimes be a problem because then it's not very believable so i don't know i'm always on the fence about those that kind of a commentary because i dislike twists and turns that don't make any sense like i'm oft i often find myself yelling at mystery books going no way no way uh, <laughs> it was believable it was believable i would recommend it it was an enjoyable enjoyable summer thriller mystery read and my first Nikki French. In the meantime, I also started Bunny. And the reason that I have that expression when I say I started Bunny is because <laughs> I've just heard so much about this book. And at first I didn't really get the hype. Like I'd seen it in bookstores and I kind of heard people say things, oh, that's a crazy book. Oh, that was so weird. What the hell just happened? People responding to reading the book. How I got to the point where I'm now reading Bunny is that and if you watch some of my other videos, uh, I found a copy of 13 Ways of Looking at Fat Girl in, a, in one of our used bookstores in Montreal and just picked it up kind of, oh yeah, I've been hearing about Bunny and I'm curious about this author. Read it last month, like so fast. It was so good. I really enjoyed it. I'll be talking about it in my July wrap up, which I have yet to film, which I'll be filming when I get back to the city right before I start the semester. Yes. It's kind of in reaction to reading 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl that I picked up Bunny because I just loved her writing and I think she's so intelligent and so smart and the observations are very sharp, or at least they were, were in 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl, in combination with also being like very sensitive, kind of very insightful, observant, sensitive to, you know, human beings and the human experience. Anyway, I'll talk about 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl a little bit more. This vlog is about Bunny. And so I just started it, I'm about 60 pages in, and it's hilarious. It's really funny, but it's also really creepy. It's a little weird. Like it's, I understand why people have that reaction. And I don't even think I'm at the weird part yet. And the main character is uh, this woman, Samantha, and she's in a writing program somewhere in, somewhere in, New England, of course. She's just describing this group of women, kind of a clique. She refers to them as the bunnies and they actually all have individual names. One is Creepy Doll. She has these nicknames for these characters. 
And then like the main, the kind of queen bee of these characters is she refers to as the Duchess. Uh, it's definitely giving me Heather's vibes. I'm sure Heather's was an inspiration for this, but it's also making me think a lot about, you know, these writers workshops, these elite kind of experiences where the best of the best are together, whether it's like in Bohemian cafes or in these upper class writing programs. Yeah, she's kind of skirting the line between, you know, <laughs> this is insane and making observations about how insane it is and that it's really important to or at least the people in the groups or in these little enclaves believe that they're really really important <laughs> to society anyway that's kind of the commentary that's been happening so far which isn't like a new commentary but it's just the manner in which she's writing about it is so engaging it's just she's so sharp like she's so, so sharp. I should probably read something to give you a sense of how sharp she is. But I didn't mark anything while I was reading. Well, let me just put you on the notes. Skip ahead if you don't wanna hear me reading from this book. So just to set this up, Samantha, our main character is invited to hang out with the bunnies. She's invited to their, they call it smut salon, and it's gonna be described in a passage that I read. She's the outsider character. So just like in Heather, is very similar to Heather's the outsider character with her friend, Ava. And for whatever reason, she's being included by the bunnies. So, so Duchess is speaking. Samantha, she says gently, have you never been to a smut salon before? You never invited me is what I want to say. Instead, I look at the smiling pink plastic pony standing in the middle of the coffee table like a sacrificial lamb. Um, I don't think so. Was I supposed to bring something or are there rules? You'll be fine, Cupcake says, swatting my question away like a fly. Just follow our lead. Really, this is just meant to be a night of inspiration for us as artists, you know? To awaken our creativity, Creepy Doll says, to open our hearts to be perverse, vignette adds. Bunny. Anyway, Samantha, you'll see, the Duchess says. Caroline was actually just about to start us off, weren't you, Bunny? Cupcake nods gravely and sets down her cocktail. Lower the lights, please, Kira, she says to Creepy Doll, who jumps from the, her seat. Suddenly, we're in semi-darkness. The only light in the room comes from a few tea lights and the shine of their hair. Cupcake rises up off the floor, clears her throat, reaches for the Ziploc bag full of what I now realize are cinnamon sticks. She pulls one out and holds it in front of her like a candle, sniffs it fervently, her eyes closed tight. And then she begins. If I were a cinnamon peeler, she begins in a quavering voice, I would ride your bed. <laughs> As she recites the Ondachi poem, she begins to shave the stick with long, tender strokes. Earth-colored dust falls onto the table. I look around. They're all listening intently, nodding solemnly. The Duchess has her eyes closed. Creepy Doll is absently petting the fluffy pink tail of the pony. Vignette is staring straight ahead with her mouth open, not sure what to do. I just sit there, clutching my drink, watching Cupcake shave and recite with increasing fast, fevered strokes. Her head is thrown back and she looks ecstatic, a little breathless. The whole time she recites, the Duchess holds my hand firmly, as if she's seeing me through a birth. An unholy laugh rises in my throat, but I hold it in. When she's finished, they're all silent for a minute, solemn, as if they're, they've are they just heard a prayer. At last, Creepy Doll whispers, oh my God, so erotic. Hot. The Duchess nods. I absolutely love the way the erotic is rendered as a tactile, olfactory experience. Every time you read that poem, Bunny, it seems to possess you. They're all looking at me, I realize now, with expectation, I'm supposed to say something. <laughs> I mean, this isn't just like an unusually good excerpt. The whole, all of the writing is, is this good. And her writing was as good in 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl. Anyhow, psyched, psyched, psyched for it to get really weird.
and I'm like, really, I don't know what's going on. Uh, pretty weird book. It's getting weird. It's getting weird, but it's not. I think it's gonna get weirder. <laughs> I don't wanna give anything away. But it, yeah, it's pretty weird. And um, yeah, so I don't think this really gives anything away, but the main character, Sam, is kind of now on the outs with her fr really close friend, Ava, and now she's really getting into the club called Club with the bunnies and it seems like they're kind of messing with her and of course but yeah that's what's happening there are drugs involved there's violence you know it's the whole package it's the whole package <laughs> which means, you guessed it, my vacation has come to an end. And I realized that I kind of intended to check in for the vlog in the evening, but I, I fell asleep reading. I was almost finished funny, and then I fell asleep reading, and then I woke up in the morning kind of early, and I finished reading because I had to finish the book. Uh, and then, I don't know, I will just say this right now, like getting an Airbnb place ready for when you leave, like, I know there's a lot of work that goes into getting an Airbnb place ready for the guests that are coming, but you also have to put a lot of effort in, like, I don't know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm paying a cleaning fee, and still I have to do a lot of stuff. Anyway, I, it's not, this is not a vlog about complaining about Airbnb. Uh, let me talk a bit about the book. <sighs> yeah. Did I like it? Yes, I really like the book. I, I knew I would like it because I love, I loved Heather's and it just, it's really Heather's. It really is Heather's, but there's been all kinds of comparisons made. I think Mona Awad herself said it was a cross between, maybe she said Mean Girls and Carrie or something. So I don't think there's like any spoiler for me to say that. I think just for a non-spoiler review, uh, you might want to pick this one up from the library because it might not be something that you want to keep in your collection. It might not be for everyone. It is a bit weird to say the least. And it's very, 
it has there's a quality to it which I sh I think that she achieved really well where it's a bit of a, it's a bit unreality set in reality there's a lot of I think I was mentioning this before there's a lot of kind of crossing in between like either like a, a heightened reality or even a psychotic reality definitely a psychotic reality and and then the question is kind of, okay, is this a commentary on the world that we live in, that we're on the precipice of a psychotic reality? Or is this actually about mental health? Or is this about drug use? Like, it's really, I think, left for the reader to decide. And I don't think I'm giving any spoilers away by saying that. Uh, in terms of starting the portion of the review with spoilers, I guess it's now. There's this part in the, in the book where she encounters a woman and the woman is reading like a, a pamphlet about schizophrenia and she's going through the um the symptoms like kind of like a grocery list list and she's like yes i have that yes i have that yes i have that so i think it raises the issue or the question for the first time in the book before that i was kind of thinking oh this is um you know just a kind of a f more like a fantasy book that's a commentary on this kind of elite uh, academic culture which I think it is as well but then it made me realize that this is also maybe maybe this girl maybe the main character Samantha has schizophrenia and this is what the experience is like for someone having schizophrenia which is interesting and I don't know it made me want to go back and reread the whole book again <laughs> from that perspective <laughs> so I, it's just a little thing, but yeah, it made me think about it completely differently. And it really made me reflect on mental health and what are the kinds of situations that you could be in that could maybe trigger a mental health episode. I mean, obviously in a really elite school and a really elite writing program where you don't have any friends, it could be just such a stressful situation being away from home, not having um, much to fall back on but I definitely probably will reread this book and I think it's I think that Mona Awad is an is an excellent writer she has a new book coming out I think it's out called All's Well and it's also set in kind of an academic setting I'm definitely gonna get it and I'm definitely gonna read it but right now I gotta go to Costco I gotta get groceries I gotta get organized for the week ahead and then classes start y'all so yeah so i hope you enjoyed this reading vlog <laughs> and i hope i got some cool footage for you it was my first one so i'd love to get some feedback in the comments about what you thought if you like this video you can give it a thumbs up if you don't like this video maybe just keep it to yourself why don't you bye